Good evening. Welcome to General Assembly. Take attendance. Representative Atashalu. Representative Bagat. President Bode. Representative Crawley. President Bode. Representative Haas. Representative Hamilton. President Bode. Representative Hammond. President Representative Kawashima. President Representative Mikowski. President Representative Matthews. President Bode. Representative Moser. President Representative O'Brien. Representative Pandat. Representative Perlosky. Representative Shim. President Representative Baisley. President Representative Bell. He's here. He's here. Representative Downey. Representative Hoffman. President Representative Lupton. President Representative McCachran. Representative Shillow. President Representative Villano. Representative Williams. Representative Zoltan. President Representative Brubaker. President Representative In. <coughs> Representative Fernandez. President Representative Sedana. Representative Asaf. President Representative Gunasekar. Representative Moeller. President Representative Radensik. Representative Ianidi. Representative Irizari. Representative Zhang. Representative Eirik. Sorry about that. Representative Lux. Representative Tykin. Treasurer Shaw. Present. Speaker Douglas. Present. Parliamentarian Agarwal. Present. Vice President Wynn. President voting. Vice President Thompson. President voting. Vice President Sanford. President voting. Vice President Wang. President voting. Vice President Weber. President voting. President Pinder. President voting. Representative Brown. And Representative Wade. Excellent. Are there any guests with us tonight? Would you please introduce yourself? I'm Dr. Marilyn Hogan, Vice President for Inclusion University and Equal Opportunity, not voting. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. We're so glad to have you. Any other guests? Okay. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Pinder. Good evening, everyone. I am extremely glad to see your dedication to USG, that you braved the weather outside to come and serve the student body. Uh, it is very bad outside, so hopefully we'll make this uh, very expedient so you guys can get back and do what you need to do. Um, just a couple of points. Um, Today, Provost Bazelak, he gave uh, an address to the students on tuition rates and uh, priorities for the next year. Uh, that, that PowerPoint is up on the USG Facebook, our website, and our Twitter. So if you did not get a chance to come to the forum, uh, please check that out and disseminate that to your constituents. It's very, very important for the next year's priorities. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, my very, very good friend, uh, Vice President Marilyn Mobley. Uh, she's the uh, Vice President of Inclusion, Diversity, Equal Opportunity. She's really spearheading a lot of the diversity issues. Hopefully you guys got a chance to look at um, the diversity report over the week. I expect some really good thought-provoking questions so we can have a really thorough discussion about diversity on this campus. Uh, next week, uh, and this kind of ties back to uh, the Provost's uh, presentation. The Provost presented on tuition rates. Uh, so you can see the tuition rate increases for next year. And to kind of follow up with that discussion, we will have the Director of Financial Aid, Venus Puliafico. She will be coming to speak uh, next week. So please take a look at that PowerPoint, uh, talk with your constituents about the financial aid issues, and come back next week to have a really good discussion with the Director of Financial Aid. Okay? Uh, a really big point, Friday. SEC State of the University Address. Myself, as President of USG, I'll be presenting on USG's progress over the year and our goals for next year. I have to keep that within five minutes, so I really have to cut down my speech. Uh, 
But uh, please, please, please uh, attend that, um, that forum. That would be Friday, 12.30 in Strosacker Auditorium. Mark your calendars. It is mandatory. So I expect to see everybody there. You don't have classes. It's during community hour. Uh, so I expect to see everybody there to uh, kind of foster some discussion, OK? Uh, just a fall, uh, small final, po final point. Um, Caucus leaders, please come on, send me an email about dinners with Dwayne. I had a really, really great dinner with the freshman caucus. Can you guys attest with snaps? <laughs> snaps, Jaylon. Yeah, um, we had a really, really good discussion. They have a really, they have a lot of really good suggestions about improvement of USG. I expect to have the same conversation with all of you guys as uh, as a caucus. So please send me an email. Set something up. It's free dinner. Don't pass it up. All right. I think that's it. I'm gonna put the points. Presenter Brubaker. Um, is there any update on the uh, referendum, or do you have any? So uh, the referendum results will be sent out hopefully tomorrow uh, from the Office of Student Affairs. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, President Pinder. Thanks. Vice President Wynn. I have no further points than on my report. I am open to your questions. <laughs> Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Weber. Hello everyone. So um, Friday was a pretty big day for the Finance Committee and really everybody in this room because we, uh, we got administrative control of Collegiate Link. So this is, a, uh, this is kind of like the last step in the process before we could begin educating students about it. So we're taking care of like the final kind of back office details, um, setting up a couple controls that need to be in place before we can let everybody um, have access to it. But in the meantime, Everybody uh, can go to Collegiate Link or casewestern.collegiatelink.net. It's in my board report. You can register, uh, set up your profile. There's a bunch of really, really interesting uh, functionalities that you know you can begin to learn about. Uh, so that was that's huge. Um, I'm in the process of drafting a letter that will introduce Collegiate Link to the student body. This will be sent out hopefully uh, Thursday, Friday. So we're going to move forward then next week with training for everybody, uh, including you guys. So. That's really exciting news. Um, also, uh, I guess it's worth noting that uh, Colleen and I and uh, Jaisal and Suzanne from the office met with Dick Jamison, and it was a really great meeting because uh, with regards to student disbursements, there are a couple kind of accounts payable issues that had recently arisen that collectively served to delay students getting their disbursements. Um, so we worked with him and we were able to arrive at a couple solutions that are going to accelerate the process, meaning students are going to get reimbursed quicker and hopefully uh, in a more efficient manner. So that's good news. And then finally, Finance Committee will meet at a different time this week so we can all go to the State of the University address. I'm thinking 5 p.m. again because that was a pretty good meeting, but I'll, I'll, I'll send an email. Open to points. Questions for Vice President Weber? Thank you, Vice President. Treasurer Shaw. Good evening, GA. Um, I don't know what Dwayne's talking about, but the weather is awesome. I love the snow. So have fun playing snow, you know, whatever, snaps. Woo! Anyways, um, so I've finally gotten the summary report for the last semester together. Um, if you can look on your agenda. Um, the first line says money allocated to student groups. This is the total amount of money um, from that USG gave to all the student groups on campus. Um, and then aggregate allocations claimed. This is the amount of money that the student groups used during the semester, which it's quite a bit. Um, it's, it's over half, but it's not as much as we expected for them to use. And then percent of external claims, that's about 70, 76% of the money. Um, aggregate fundraise account uh, money used. This is the money from the student group's own fundraise account. This is the money that they raised. They used about 28,000 uh, of it. And then per capita spending, I looked up um, the number beside that dollar number is um, 4,228. That's the total number of students that came here last semester um, of undergrad. So all the clubs used about $22 per student. Um, <coughs> whenever they were spending money for the clubs and stuff. Um, again, going back to you know the stuff that I had done last semester, 
I've noticed that the USG office is sometimes clean, sometimes not. Make sure you keep the USG office clean. Um, I've noticed that everyone's been using the disbursement log. Good. I haven't come upon any problems. Um, I'm still getting questions on it, so if you do have any questions, be sure to stop by. Let me know. Um, that way, there's no miscommunication between me and like whatever you wanting to, you're wanting to do. And I put my office hours on the sheet: 11:30 um, to 12:30 on Tuesdays, and then 11:30 to 5:30 on Thursdays. So be sure to drop by and say hi. I'm open to points. Representative Baisley. Um, I'm just wondering the 60,000 or so that wasn't claimed. Does that just roll over to the next semester money, or is it? Yeah, the money children? that the money that the student groups didn't use that rolls over. Thank you, Treasurer. Vice President Wang. Is he present? Yeah. Any points for Vice President Wang? Thank you. Uh, Vice President Sanford. <laughs> Hi everybody. Okay, so as you all know, Relay for Life is coming up and all that. So we're having an idea for USG. I think it's a great idea. I hope you're like it. We're how, uh, thinking about having like a walk the puppy, pet the puppy thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I hope everybody likes that. We'll have like, you know, see if we can like go to Humane Society or something like that and ch like, you know, charge people. Everybody loves puppies, okay? That's what it comes down to. <laughs> also for uh, all the caucuses, if you ever want to plan an event or you need PR for event, talk to Pocky, she's the liaison on that. Um, also, again, Spring Fest, the game show idea. If all the caucuses could come up with like some trivia questions, because we're thinking about like having like a, you know, have caucuses sign up for an hour block or a two hour block or whatever and just ask trivia questions. Also, apparently we came up with the idea that I'll be dressing up as Vanna White. So, I'll go with that. <laughs> um, and um, again, this thing, everybody go to it, should be there. Um, I actually have to work, but go there, it's a beautiful flyer. And representative spotlights. All right, so our representative spotlights, I'm gonna start with a couple questions and then you guys can try and guess who it is. Um, our first representative spotlight is, um, the person said, which pizza vendor should be number one on next year's Pizza Olympics? They said Dewey's. Um, something that they can't live without with is chocolate. Wait, Allie's got yeah, Katie Collins. <laughs> wow. One second. Wow. That's after the first one. I'd still like to say that she put down for her special talent. I have really curly <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> and she likes making origami stars. So. Let's throw that out there. Katie Collins. Where's the candy? Yes, the candy. All right, and the next representative spotlight. So we'll start with um, strangest thing they've ever done is fit into a Christmas bag, gift bag. Their favorite animal is a dolphin. <laughs> Like to say bye if you get his hand up first. Is it Treasure Shaw? Yes. <laughs> treasure Shaw. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. We're done. Right. So. We're open to points. <laughs> Any points for the Public Relations Committee? Vice President Wynn. Any idea what the t-shirts are going to look like for the uh, t-shirt swap? Um, for the t-shirt swap, we were going to step for like that one. Representative Crawley? Um, we actually... We're gonna bring this up next week, but I guess we can do it now since it got brought up. Um, we got a lot of demand from the t for the t-shirts that were ordered two years ago. Um, they were baseball style tees. Um, you may have seen them around there. Gray with blue sleeves, and they have logo B um, across the center, and then across the back in just blue um, is the Spartan head, like in the middle of the shoulder blades. So we were going to see if, like, if that's what people really wanted. Um, totally down for like a different style athletic t-shirt or non-athletic t-shirt um, in general is the t-shirt buffer if anyone had any other ideas but if not then it'll probably be like that so you can bring up any things yeah. Representative Haas? Um, last year did we have a USG logo on it somewhere? Or we said not the USG logo on it anymore? The logo was on last year's shirt. The logo wasn't on? The logo wasn't on last year's shirt, I believe, because it's like it's just a fun thing for us to do for the students, and it's supposed to build school spirit. So the whole point of this 
is that someone is supposed to bring in a t-shirt of another university and swap it for a case one to build school spirit but because it's spring fest and it has to be a game or an interactive thing we can't just have people bring the t-shirts we have to make it into a game as well for people that don't bring in t-shirts Any other suggestions, comments for the Public Relations Committee? Representative Teshley? I personally like the idea of having a different shirt just because I think it's kind of part of the fun is finding a different shirt every single year. Okay. All right, if you have any other ideas for the Public Relations Committee, I suggest attending their committee meeting. Are there any other questions for Representative Bell at this time? In case you didn't know, we uh, meet in the USG office before. Uh, GA, so I six. Excellent. Thank you, Representative Bell. Vice President Thompson. <coughs> so last night, the IT committee worked on the new website for a significant portion of time, and we made good progress. So our deadline of spring break to get it up is looking like it should work out. And uh, Collegiate Link's really awesome, so go visit it. Any questions for Vice President Thompson? Okay. Thank you, Vice President. We will open caucus reports. Uh, is there anyone to give a report for the engineering caucus? Representative Baisley. guys so as you probably know we had our event last Friday which was the open forum on whether or not to do have major assignments due after break um, thank you to everyone who came it wasn't as well attended as we would have hoped we think that's because there was a lot of other things going on right at that time um, but we did we did have students come in and we did get um, some really good feedback and um, some opinions about things that we hadn't thought of um, so we're gonna follow up on that Colin's gonna bring it up at his Fiskey meeting to just feel out what faculty think and see if we can get support on it. Um, however, we don't think there was enough attendance to decide one way or the other whether we should write a resolution because there wasn't that many people there and we feel like we need more of an undergraduate opinion to make a resolution. So we're thinking about doing maybe a Google survey just to try to get out to more students, make it really simple. If anyone has any ideas, um, we'd love to hear them. So you can email anyone in the engineering caucus. Um, open to points. Any questions for Representative Paisley? Thank you. Thanks. For Arts and Science, Representative Bagat. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, Last Thursday, the Arts and Sciences Caucus had uh, an event, Coffee and Commons, uh, pretty successful. Got a lot of good comments from the students. Uh, and then we're going to bring them up with Dean Taylor when we meet with him after GA tonight. And that's about it. Any uh, questions? Questions for Representative Bagat? Vice President Wayne. There's going to be a faculty meeting. Um, I'm not quite sure of that date. Uh, Representative Burbaker, do you know? It's sometime in March. Um, we have a meeting in the next couple of weeks where we can get the exact date for you. And from my understanding, there isn't a lot of agreement when it comes to those meetings, so it, nothing may happen. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Representative Bagat. For nursing, Representative Eric. This past week in our meeting with Dr. Lotus, we looked at a survey that all the seniors take as they are leaving right before they graduate. Um, and we discussed some things that um, the nursing school was rated low on by the students. Um, and we're going to target that with our cupcake complaints that we have in March. And we're also going to um, come up with some possible ideas to improve these things within the nursing school that, that are, um, relate to students. And also, hang on, let me think. 
I didn't bring notes today, sorry. And we have our um, cupcake um, from, we have the results from our cupcake compliments and we're going to send notes to all the faculty that were involved um, that people rated them highly and students made notes about it so we're just going to like give a little postcard like we appreciate what you do um, the students said these things about you and um, just kind of like a thing to reach out to faculty within the school and um, I think that's about it that's all we did last week so I'm open to points. Any questions for Representative Eric? Thank you. Uh, from Weatherhead, Representative Zhang. Hello everyone. Um, this semester, um, uh, Weatherhead Caucus usually uh, hold, holds the meetings, which on which is on f uh, Friday, uh, 5 p.m. in in the PBL lobby. So if anyone have any comments, can just uh, stop by that time if you have time. And also this coming um, <coughs> next week. Uh, which is February 17th, we will have an event which is set up the tables in the lobby of the PBL. Basically what, what we are going to do is to introduce ourselves because we have the new member and also we will let them to, to complete a survey which is about the PBLs and the weatherhead. Um, so we will give out the candies for for everyone who completes the service. Um, yeah, so basically that's the event we will do in this month. And also we are connecting to the people who are in the charge of the lab of PBL because we want to change some parties of the printer. The first things uh, we are going to change is we want we want the faculties give more coaching to the people who are working who are working in in the lab uh, because we basically really want them know how to fix the printer problem uh, during during the daily time and also like we um, hopefully we can kind of uh, separate the usage of the of two printers. The first one is we want to separate the amount of the usage, like one is only for the small amount printer and another one is for the small and the big amount. Be, um, because a lot of time, a lot of like the, uh, uh, the graduate student, they always print like the box or like the handout. So, so it will take a while for us to wait for the printing. Um, and uh, and there is another thing I need to mention. Sorry for the wrong information, um, because like the cafes in the PBL is not under the charge of Bon FT. So we are talking to someone else who can change like the uh, food policies in the PBL. So any open point? Thank you. Thank you, Representative Zhang. The first year caucus, uh, Representative Asaf. We have no committee reports or caucus reports, but open questions. Thank you, Representative Saf. Parliamentarian Agarwal. Hi, GA. Um, so today we're taking nominations yeah. for election commissioner. Um, in your agenda, you have the job description for election commissioner. And I hope you have some nominations in mind or are thinking of somebody you can nominate because it's a really important position for our elections um, coming up in March. So. Um, yeah, I will see you in your business for those nominations. Excellent. Any questions for Parliamentary Nagarwal this time? Great. Well, we're happy to welcome uh, Vice President Mobley to the podium now. Uh, please be respectful. You haven't even spoken yet, and you're already being applauded. That's fantastic. Uh, please, please be respectful and give her your full attention. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me, Duane, and thank you, Brian, for giving me this opportunity. I um, had thought I was going to be here before then. I think we tried earlier, and we just couldn't get the schedule together, so I'm really pleased. I will say I have to drive. I don't like snow as much as some people, so uh, I won't be able to stay very long. But I thought um, it would be a good opportunity for me to tell you about the office, 
why we have such an office, what the office does, and, um, and I'll take a few questions from you. Um, this office really existed. I'm in the same place that somebody else occupied, but it wasn't um, at the level that it is now. It was situated in HR, and it was the person who assisted the university with hiring, um, with complaints around discrimination, with requests for ADA accommodations, and so on. And what I'm pleased about is that the university strategic plan and with the approval of President Snyder and many in leadership here, it was decided that this would be a cabinet level position. So now, um, unlike before where I believe the person's position was associate vice president in HR, it's now a cabinet level position. And I need to tell you a little bit about where I was. I was provost at Bennett College for Women, which is a small HBCU for women, historically black college uh, uh, for women in Greensboro, North Carolina. They don't get as much snow as we get here in Ohio. Uh, I'm originally from Ohio, from Akron, Ohio, so this was a return in many ways. Um, one of the ways that it was a return is my PhD in English is from Case Western. So Case Western Reserve is my alma mater, so this is back home, both to be near my parents and back home to be at the alma mater where I earned my PhD. My bachelor's degree, by the way, is from Barnard College of Columbia University, and my master's is from NYU. All of my degrees are in English, which is kind of an anomaly at Case Western because if I took a poll, most of you may be science, medicine, technology, and engineering, and so social sciences and the humanities don't always get that much attention here, but I'm here to give them attention right now. So, um, so I'm pleased that my own work in uh, literature and English, my PhD was a cross-cultural study here. My uh, dissertation director actually still teaches here in the English department, Professor Gary Stoneham. And I was given permission to do a cross-cultural study. I studied a black woman writer and a white woman writer, and I looked at how they use myth and folklore and I looked at what I call the cultural function of narrative. And while you may be in different areas of study, all of us are using narrative. We're all using storytelling, and I'm doing it right now, telling you a little bit about the story of how I got here. So in any event, I was pleased that President Snyder decided that this would be a cabinet level position, which means I would serve on her leadership team. I take the word serve very seriously. I'm here to serve. I'm here also to teach. Um, I consider diversity work, diversity education. The English department is expecting me to teach. I told Provost Bazelak I will teach probably next year. I haven't taught here at Case Western since I was a graduate student. So years ago I did teach what was then called English 150. We have Sages now. Sages was not here um, when I was here. Um, I did invite Peter Whiting to my other university. I was at George Mason University for 19 years, and I invited him there because I read in the alumni magazine about Sages. So Sages, as far as I'm concerned, and I'd love some comment on this, is one of the places I think we could do more work around the issue of diversity. But in any event, the position is designed so that I can have a leadership role, a strategic leadership role to see where are we doing diversity, how are we doing diversity. In my office, there is someone named Melissa Burroughs, uh, Dr. Melissa Burroughs, who is over staff hiring. She pays attention again to issues of hiring, issues of um, AD accommodations, when anyone at the university feels they've been discriminated against in any way, shape, or form, it goes to her on the staff side of the house. She does a training every Monday for new employees, all new employees, whether they are uh, secretaries, administrative assistants, um, executive aides, all the, the various titles related to the staff position, she meets with them. On the other side of my office is Dr. John Clossy from nursing who is over the faculty diversity office. When there is a search for a faculty member in any department, they come to his office. Searches have to be approved in that office. And then the other person who works with him is uh, a new person, Tennille Kaus, who has a law degree, um, but she's not practicing law for us. What she's doing for us is working with search committees to be sure that the pool of candidates for faculty positions is a diverse pool. 
And then the other person is my in my office is um, Liz Roccaforte. I'm talking so fast because I'm trying to, I think I've already passed the five minute mark. But uh, Liz Roccaforte is the diversity program manager and her job is to help with programming that comes out of my office. Those of you who attended the MLK convocation received uh, that report there. I thank Duane for being sure that you had it tonight. And this report is really my attempt to say that we have begun some diversity work here. We've published a newsletter, we have a website, we have a diversity leadership council, all eight um, graduate schools and the undergraduate um, program is represented. There are student representatives there, graduate student representatives, and many people from around the university who can assist me with making decisions. I really encourage you to send me emails if you have concerns about diversity issues or how some element of diversity is being um, treated at the university. I brought a copy of the newsletter and I gave you one just so that you could know one thing about it. Sometimes people think diversity is all about race. It is not. Sometimes people think it's all about gender. It is not. It is about race. It's about gender. We wanted our newsletter to pay attention to other issues related to diversity. Um, uh, so we, well, there's a few that we wanted to pay attention to. One of them was <coughs> to represent other faculty members. So the first um, faculty member that we featured was Dr. John Flores, who is um, a faculty member looking at immigration and other issues as, and he's partly doing it from his own identity as a person um, from Mexico. We also wanted to be sure that people understood that diversity includes LGBT um, students, faculty and staff, and at this year's alumni reunion, we had our first reception for members of the LGBT community. This was significant for our campus. There were faculty members there, there were <coughs> alums who came who said years ago they could never have even acknowledged to anyone that they were part of that community. So we um, believe it's significant that we at least are featuring that um, community in our newsletter. The first newsletter featured disability services because sometimes it's students, sometimes it's faculty, and sometimes it's staff who need the university to pay attention to what kind of accommodation they need, whether it's a ramp in a building, whether it's attention to them not uh, being able to have full use of their sight or full use of their limbs. So it's a variety of issues. In any event, um, I guess I want to close with the fact that that's kind of the compliance side of, of my office. In other words, we pay attention to ADA law, to discrimination laws related to race and gender and religion and all of those various kinds of difference. On the other side is attention to inclusion and diversity education. So some of what we see our office doing is providing education and assisting faculty, students, and staff with being more knowledgeable. Sometimes students really just don't know, and I believe the forum that we're going to have on Thursday is sometimes people just don't know some of the reasons for some of the work that we do in higher education. So with that, I think I better be quiet. Mm -hmm. Are you taking any questions, Dr. Moore? I am taking questions. Does anyone have what, questions? How, how do you all say it? Points. Yeah. Open to points. <laughs> is, I'm open is the to phrase. points. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Representative Haas. Um, I know that we took 10% more international students this year. Um, I know that we did that because Thank you for asking that question. I have presented that, I presented that question to Randy Dykey and I presented it to um, Mr. Bischoff. Have you met with him yet? He's coming. Um, I believe there is a concerted effort to pay attention to this metropolitan area. I do know that there is some concern that we've been so Ohio-centered, is the language that he used when he spoke um, at a recent gathering, that we've been very Ohio-centered, and so there's a concerted effort now to move outside Ohio. I hope we're not going to exclude, I mean, we're not going to exclude Ohio, we're not going to exclude the Cleveland metropolitan area, and there are lots of initiatives to address what I would call the pipeline, the K through 12 pipeline, so that we're, we have tentacles out in the public schools. Clearly, we need to do a better job of that. Um, there are people in the greater Cleveland community who are concerned that it's going to be imbalanced, that we're going to work so hard to get more international students that we're going to neglect what I call 
domestic diversity. So we can't do one instead of the other. Some of you uh, who may have heard me speak before, I know I call myself the both and lady for a reason. So both and for me means I do want us to continue to pay attention to global diversity, but I also want us to pay attention to domestic diversity, and that includes the metropolitan area. Yes. Yeah, another one. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, Right, but I don't know if he's describing it in those terms. I mean, I don't know if one is, I mean, I've heard uh, Dean Patterson, for example, say that we shouldn't move into a situation of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right. So I think he's the, the best person to answer exactly what that ratio, but I haven't heard it framed that way. Um, I've heard it framed that the um, underrepresented minorities, the, the number is down and there's a, a great deal of attention to how we can address that. But um, I don't want us to get into framing it as we, if we take one, we can't take the other. And I don't think um, Mr. Bischoff does either, our enrollment vice president. Our yes. representative Crawley. Oh, I'm not supposed to be recognizing people you are. Okay, fine. It might just be easier yes. since I know their names. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know we've been doing a much better job at recruiting both faculty, staff, and students um, of diversity. Um, but my fear is always that once they get here that they're not well supported while they're here. Um, what specific efforts are we taking to make sure that, that students especially, um, but including faculty members, feel like they're being supported? You know, I said 20 years ago, they couldn't come out in a community, but what kind of groups are we making so that they not only feel like they can say who they are, but align themselves with people like them? That's a very good question. Part of what I've had to spend the first year doing is just finding out what's here, what kind of organizations are here, what kind of offices are here. And I would say that Liz Roccaforte in my office to deal with your first, uh, with the last part of your question, is about to begin safe zone training. And on other campuses where I've been, safe zone training is really important. Um, it's training that you provide for faculty, students, and staff. When, it, uh, when it's used, you get a sticker on your office or on your window or something that says it's a place where people can come and feel supported. If they have some issue related to their identity, they can feel um, that they will get support for that. There are lots of offices here that are, uh, are here to address some of the issues you've talked about. The Office of Multicultural Affairs is here to address some of these issues. Um, David Fleschler is here to help us address some of our issues related to international students. I've been bringing um, some programs and some training to campus already. I'm going to continue doing that. One of the people we brought to campus is Howard Ross. He had just done a similar kind of training for the leadership team at Johns Hopkins University. So I asked him to meet first with the cabinet, then with President's Council. And so what we have as our series charge for this calendar year is more um, training, and I hate the word training, uh, it's what you do with the pets, uh, but I, so education, more diversity education so that people know how to be supportive. Sometimes people say really crass things and they just don't know that they're being unsupportive. So some of what we have to do is diversity education so that people are more respectful, more considerate, um, weigh their words. I'm an English professor, so I pay a great deal of attention to language. And sometimes when things break down, it's just because of the way we've used language. And so part of the diversity education is about helping us pay more attention to that. But I think there are a variety of offices, and the one that um, our office is already starting some of it. We're also working with HR. Uh, again, one of the issues that comes up is climate. And climate is sometimes not about faculty, not about students, but sometimes the people at the office, in the office who have to handle student concerns. Sometimes that's where people feel unsupported. So we are paying attention to the gambit, but it's piece by piece, office by office, a little at a time. And every now and then we get a big forum like this. Representative Teshalu? Um, I'm just curious, looking at these demographics, um, what ethnicities fall under this unknown or other category because it makes up 15% of the I couldn't tell you. It's about, you know, it, it, your question is a good one because it raises the same issue that's going to come up with the current census. Um, some people choose not to identify. Some people also choose um, to resist 
the categories all together. So the categories are, you know, federal guidelines about the categories. They do ship, they have shifted over time. And there are people sometimes who are of mixed race who choose not to put, in a, put themselves in a category. So those are the reasons that I know. Some people just don't like the categories, period, and they choose not to answer. Sometimes people know how they are regarded in culture, but don't want to reveal that. So sometimes it's an act of protest. Um, as we move into the census, I hope people will not protest that way because it'll help us learn who's here. Um, it, it really is an important tool for the government to use, but I understand that some people will choose not to. Um, my brother, for example, I have a brother who is biracial because of my father's remarriage, and he married a woman who's Indonesian. So I'm real curious what their children are going to say. You know, anything could happen. Um, so there are some people who do it. It's, it's an act of protest and rebellion for some, and for others, it's just they don't know why we do it, and so they don't they don't know how they want to answer. Representative Lupton, oh, I keep trying to do it. It's the teacher in me. That's okay. <laughs> Yes. Um, if I feel that I or somebody else has been uh, diversity discriminated against, uh, is there support in your office, or how do you go about reporting that? I know you could probably go through the case uh, police department, but I mean, is there any support in your police office department? I'm getting discriminated against. Well, as a student, you would probably go to student affairs. Our office is mainly for faculty and staff, but we would we would take the we would take the issue and then address it to the right person. I believe it's someone in student affairs who would actually take it, but it's discrimination of whatever sort, you know. So it could be of any sort. Um, we've gotten different kinds of complaints in the office since I've been here. I got here. January 5th of last year. And so the complaints have been of different sorts. Part of the, um, the work I've also done is go to meet with each dean. Some of the deans have invited me to their new faculty orientation. We also had our own new faculty orientation where faculty, regardless of their identity, can ask the very same question that you just asked. So yeah, the office is available as a resource for the entire university. Um, so it's faculty, students, and staff, it's just that more often students go downstairs to someone in the student affairs office. Excellent. That's a good question, though. Yes. Um, I noticed in your I'm doing it again. <laughs> pamphlet here, your goals for the future under recruitment and retention, you wanted to increase retention of women, um, faculty and women undergraduate students, and I was wondering um, if you had any statistics or evidence as to why that's a problem, retention of women at this university? Why it's, well, it's not unique to our university. It's, a, it's an issue in some disciplines. And so I had a conversation with the, the dean of the School of Nursing. I'm sorry, with the dean of the School of Medicine. It's a big difference. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it has to do with choices that people are making. Um, sometimes people are making choices about when to start families. This is not just women, but this is one of the issues sometimes. And sometimes it's issues in the department. Sometimes people get a better offer. So we are um, paying attention to what it is. Um, sometimes it's a geographic decision. People just have decided that this is not where they want to be. Um, so it's a variety of issues. And it can be issues within a department. You know. So part of our work is to examine what is it. Is it something unique to a department? Is there a problem? Or is it just about personal choice? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people leave, they don't tell you why. Representative Baisley. Um, this is just kind of follow up on the diversity statistics. You mentioned federal guidelines. But like, what kind of guidelines do we use those for? Like, what? I mean, what? What is that? I'm just curious. Well, I'll give one example. The um, Office of uh, Contracts, what we refer to as the OFCCP, those are guidelines about how you're supposed to keep track of who's hired. You're supposed to keep track of um, the numbers of people hired in the different categories. Um, for example, on the faculty side, we're to keep category, you know, statistics for number of full professors, number of assistant professors, lecturers, and so on. Um, the rate at which people are getting tenure and that sort of thing. So it's all kinds of data that the federal government government requires that we keep track of, partly because we are getting money from lots of sources. So we get NIH grants, we get NSF grants, um, NEA as well, not as many NEA and NEH, but even those, so those are federal contracts and the federal government requires that you keep data on who's getting access and who's not getting access. So that's. Um, 
that that's a real serious thing. Uh, I was just at a meeting this morning put on by HR and legal counsel, and they pointed out um, a suit against Sears, because when you are getting federal money and you are um, hiring employees and you're not treating them fairly, you run the risk of a lawsuit and so it's really expensive not to keep the data it's really expensive to discriminate and so we're trying to pay attention that we have fair practices and equal um, opportunity in our treatment of our faculty students and staff Excellent. any other questions for dr. Mobley okay well, dr. Mobley thank you so much for joining us tonight we're so My happy pleasure. to have you This time we move, we'll move into old business. Uh, if there's no legislation, we will resume nominations for the Taft House representative. Secretary Hahn, do we have anyone nominated currently? Okay. There are currently no nominations. Representative Brubaker? Uh, Case Renard, and I have one more, but let me get her name so I can say um, Mihika Gangoli. Um, M-I-H-I-K-A-G-A-N-G-O-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Okay. Any other nominations? You'll have to excuse me. Uh, I did not know that these were, uh, that we did not have a candidate carrying over from last week, so I believe we will uh, postpone these elections then until next week until these candidates can be contacted. Uh, if there are no other nominations, those will be open until we vote next week. Now open new business. Is there any new business? Yep. It's a true question. There is new business. Treasurer Shaw. Um, I need to keep this resolution. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a speaker in the pro? Representative Hamilton. Hello everyone. I'll give you a second to look over the uh, resolution. It wasn't attached to the agenda. All right, basically uh, this resolution wants to do is just have the campus maps updated and have those updated maps put in areas of high traffic that people could use to navigate around our very confusing campus. <laughs> Open the <to> points. <laughs> Any questions for Representative Hamilton? Representative Bell? No, this is not quite as related on campus maps, but you know when you uh, the housing like there's a, there's a map for the housing thing. Like, you can, like, it's got, like, north side, south side, you can, like, look all around. That thing is very, very cool. hard to find. It's really hard to find on the website. So, I mean, that's not quite as related. Okay. That's not really pertaining to this. So. Any other points? Any, any questions for Representative Hamilton? Thank you, Representative. All right, thanks. Is there a speaker on the con? Seeing none, we will open discussion for five minutes. <coughs> Vice President Thompson. Move to amend, uh, add an S onto common after the, with privilege commons. No. Friendly. Excellent. Senator Perlowski. Um, I'm going to leave this up to the writer and the way in which I want to suggest amending whereas clause number four, because I think it, the number of campus maps on campus is scarce. Is it doesn't say anything. Like, it, like there are too few, how about something like there are too few campus maps available? Are you proposing an amendment? Yeah, I, but I wanted to leave it, I want to propose that amendment in the wording of the author. I don't know how to word it. Would the author care to amend whereas clause four in lieu of <coughs> Representative Perlowski's suggestion? You are not obligated to. Representative Pulaski, would you like to amend? Um, whereas. Come back to it. Just come back to it. Okay, I'll come back to it. 
Okay. Representative Bagat. Um, change of beauty resolve clause number two, um, which is at the corner of Adelbert, Adelbert Road. Can you mean at the corner of Adelbert Road and Cerro Drive? Sorry, was that an amendment? Okay, so you move to amend. Move to amend. Thank you. Uh, you resolve clause two. Okay. That thing I said before. You repeat it. Can you repeat it? Uh, oh, a the okay. between at the corner, so at the corner of a Delbert Road, to the back corner. Franklin. Thank you, Representative Brubaker. Um, I move to amend whereas clause number four. How about um, whereas um, campus maps are scarce. Friendly. How do you feel about that, Representative Berlowski? <laughs> Super. <laughs> Any other points for discussion? Representative Bell? I was saying another option would be the campus maps are even numbered. <laughs> if you'd like to propose that amendment, I welcome you to. Are there any other points for discussion? On resolution R19-10. Representative Lupton. Even if, if it's grammatical, if uh, an amendment is grammatical, uh, it does. If any change is to be made, even grammatical, it has to be proposed. Uh, know that before, even after these resolutions are voted in by the assembly, they are reviewed uh, simply for grammatical content one final time by the parliamentarian before they're sent out. Uh, the stipulation is that no change in meaning can be made to the document. So. Uh, these amendments are good. They help Parliamentarian Agarwal out, uh, but they also uh, will, will be caught. So don't feel like you have to scrutinize every single word right now. The, the focus right now should be on the content of the resolution. Representative Brubaker. Move to previous question. Second. Okay. Uh, we will vote on ending discussion. Uh, all in favor signify by raising your hand. And all opposed. Okay. Uh, we will now vote on resolution R19-10. So all elected members in favor of this resolution as stated, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, thank you. All opposed? Abstentions? One. That's okay, we respect your opinion. Resolution R19-10 passes. I'm excited, you couldn't tell. Is there any other legislation for new business? Seeing none, uh, we will now open nominations for election commissioner. Uh, Parliamentarian Agarwal, would you care to introduce this at all? Um, like I said previously, the uh, description of the election commissioner position is in the agenda. Um, it's basically all, I, I, last week I did mention the eligibility of the position. You can't be participating in the elections yourself if you're the election commissioner. It can't be one of, um, can't be myself, can't be one of exec members. So if you have any nominations. And they, they don't have to be, well, no, the election commissioner has to be a member from USG. The commission can be, two people can be non-USG members. Did you say that a, uh, they can't be a current member of USG exec? They, the exec, uh, no, the no, election okay. commissioner has to be a, a member of USG. Okay. Is that clear? If there's a point of clarification, speak now. President Pulaski. Uh, Is eligible. Uh, I must have you, messed that up. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, just, just out of curiosity, in years past, uh, if you're a graduating senior, then you can do it. Uh, Correct. I mean, if just the right. the the primary the primary eligibility constraints are that you cannot be running in this election, and you must currently be an elected member of USG. Right. Is that correct? Excellent. So nominations are now open for the election commissioner for the 2010 USG elections. <coughs> Representative Brubaker? Uh, Representative Atesh. 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 
Yes, it has. <laughs> that one? Okay. Right, right here. Okay. Representative Pulaski? You are entitled to decline. If you are in the room, you can do that now. Representative Lupton? Um, nominate uh, Representative Hamilton. I decline. Representative Bagat? Uh, two nominations. Uh, nominate Speaker Douglas and uh, President Pender. Right. Is that a decline? Okay. Yourself? I'll think about it. Uh, Vice President Thompson? Uh, I nominate Representative Haas. No. <laughs> okay. Any other nominations? Treasurer Shaw? Um, I nominate Representative Harry. Is that a decline? Okay. Any other nominations at this time? Vice President Wang? Vice President Wynn? I nominate Representative Crowley. I'll think about it. She'll think about it. Any other nominations at this time? Excellent. Uh, these nominations will remain open until next week uh, when we will finally elect an election, election commissioner. Also, we have to elect an election commissioner next week. We will be electing an election commissioner next week, <laughs> we whether you want to or not. <laughs> Yes, Representative Haas. You can't nominate him if you don't know his name. What? Yes, Representative Tyke. Okay, uh, we are moving on. We are now in open forum. Are there any points for open forum? Representative Bell. Since it came to my mind, the major thing I said earlier, mm -hmm. work on that. Just really, what, what, what specifically is so hard about it? I like it's not like anywhere e like easily accessible. Like my house is huge. Like I kind of a while. So my suggestion is that while they are kind of revamping the whole website as it is with the new policy, email housing at his mm -hmm. and send them your some comments about how this is uh, inconvenient for you. Right. Thank you. Senator Perlosky. So uh, I just want to share that in Student Life, uh, we did get the number for the facility services 24-hour uh, call hotline. And so like, Mintry can give it to you. Uh, but examples of appropriate usage for that if you see a small leak of water coming out by the corner of Murray Hill and Adelbert, <laughs> which I had to text with the number and then I didn't call. Um, but like, so all the things that we talk about all the time, I just thought it might be a useful number, number for you. Like if the village parking lot garage is breaking all the time, like you can go straight to facilities and it's 368-2580. Excellent. Use it responsibly and intelligently. Representative Haas. students of uh, water returning and then six hours later they said uh, you know it might be contaminated so I feel like that's something that should be uh, a lot faster instead of waiting six hours when someone gets sick. Representative Lupton? Yeah I'm just wondering uh, USG's opinion on 
on, uh, I know I've been doing the Pizza Olympics for the past couple years, um, and I'm wondering, uh, I've been having some discussion and some thought uh, of, instead of having it just as an event by ourself and uh, incorporating it with a homecoming uh, tradition, and we would have it uh, on the Thursday of homecoming. I, would, I mean, there's pros and cons, I just want to hear Yushi's opinion on incorporating that into, officially incorporating that into homecoming. Any question or any, excuse me, comments on Representative Upton? What he has to say? Vice President Weber? I would just worry about uh, scheduling. Like, I'm sure things get very condensed, a lot of stuff going on. So I don't want, you know, this event to you know, get lost in the shuffle, so to speak. Representative Bell? Yeah, off of that, I feel like with all the PR for different homecoming things, I feel that these little sweat get as much weight as it currently gets, and therefore you probably have a little over attendance just with all the number of events going on. Representative Teshalu? Representative Lupton, if I can uh, suggest, uh, Provost Hour no longer exists, so considering moving the event to a Friday and perhaps collaborating with Share the Vision to become a regularly scheduled community hour program could be an alternative. Did you have a uh, program for him? Sure. Um, so talking about sustainability in USG, um, just recently talked to Colleen, and uh, she brought up the issue of uh, maybe incorporating it some way operating bylaws, and um, I mean, we have to do a lot of research on that, uh, but that would definitely keep it sustainable, it would make it something like you have to make nominations. Um, currently, uh, the, the issue there is actually making it, uh, um, giving the right information and knowledge uh, how so people can actually uh, carry through the Peace Olympics efficiently. Um, but what is your thoughts uh, as USG in, uh, in keeping it sustainable and in actually Incorporating it into the uh, operating bylaws. Incorporating Pete's Olympics into. Uh, yeah, the operating well, bylaws. It's almost as if what you have to decide is if you embrace it as a tradition. Correct. Do you want to embrace this as a tradition? And if so, the sustainability effort could be putting it in some case, you know, I leave next year and all you guys graduate and, you know, there's some sustainability. To it. Sure. Representative Berlowski? Any other comments on Keith's suggestion? Okay. Keith, is that all? That's it. Excellent. Are there any other points for open forum? President uh, Bell? Can you say that? <coughs> Instead of it being in, uh, I talked to the editor and she apologized, uh, just miscommunication. And we're going to get that, they were going to get it in this week. Uh, I'm going to hold off for a couple of weeks until I talk to each of the vendors and we try to get this, um, some of the yearly student discounts. Like if they're going to do 10% off, like any any long term discounts, I'll put it in there before I put it out for the students. So you'll see it in a couple of weeks instead. Excellent. Anything else for me? Yes, sir, Representative Hoffman. Uh, there was a leadership conference this past Saturday, and um, at one of the tables I was sitting with 
um, Representative Pulaski and a couple other people from USG. And um, we are sitting, uh, there are students from Notre Dame College um, and higher. What? Higher? Oh, our table was just Notre Dame College. Yeah, but they were talking about their undergraduate student government and how they're really small, but that they would love to like have part meetings or have some kind of like intercollegiate USG kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, just kind of letting people know that. Um, if anyone in is interested on exec in organizing that or I don't know, committee, they seem really interested. In past years, exec has, has visited a uh, another USG or student government, excuse me, to just watch their their happenings. We've never invited another student government to visit us, so I think that's a great suggestion for exec to take back. Any other points for open forum as we wrap up? Representative Lupton? Just a point on, I went to the leadership conference also, and uh, I sat in a really interesting class about, uh, it was like a, uh, remember how like a couple months ago I brought up like uh, this, this thing of feeling in USG. I just, it was an obscure, I don't know, term. Um, and I went in, uh, and I, I don't know, I was, I was sitting with, uh, it was membership appreciation. And I feel appreciated, and I, I, everybody might feel appreciated, but um, I just, my suggestion is maybe, uh, maybe in the, I don't know, what committee would look on to uh, membership appreciation, some kind of way we can do that. Um, anyway, that's just something I Thank you. So. Excellent. Colleen. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about, very quickly, you with that camera on, please. Don't throw me. This is so much prettier. Oh, stop. Okay, if you have your book, we're going to talk about compassion fatigue. You know, Jackie you know, really <coughs> liked this last year, so I thought, I'm going to talk about this again. This is a great time for this. This would be, I know it's not numbered in your book, and I apologize. It's page 22 for anybody that looks at the bottom. Okay? You have your book. Um, compassion fatigue is an interesting syndrome that can come from folks just like you who help because you care, you care a lot. You have dialogue with friends and with other students, whether you're in the nursing caucus or whether or not you're sitting at a table and you're getting information. And sometimes this propensity to help can really come back in a harmful way. So I really wanted to draw, to draw your attention to this because I think it's a time of year when you have more dialogue relationships with your friends. So sometimes what they tell you is meaningful to your role on USG, and sometimes it's they just want to be able to talk about their problems. And because you care and you're in the job of listening, you listen and you take it in way too much. The description in here, it says much of the research done on this fatigue syndrome has to do with caregivers, people who take care of parents, things like that. So this is really kind of a stretch for students, but it's an appropriate stretch. So compassion fatigue is a syndrome consisting of various symptoms that mirror post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay? Some of the symptoms that you want to watch out for, overuse sense of compassion that leads to a lack of ability to feel or care for others, accumulated fatigue that can take months or years to surface, re-experience in a trauma situation or a student's experience if it really gets to the place where you're starting to hear everything. Um, losing yourself to students or events or things that people, people you're serving. Okay, so you're not mindful of your own needs and that's really kind of scary. So, you need to put yourself first sometimes and if you start to feel some of these things, you need to get the appropriate help for yourself and sometimes that just means moderating your diet, exercising more, having meaningful conversations with your friends. Okay, so it's taking care of you when you're taking care of other people. So, um, and then in the handout it talks about strategies for preventing this compassion fatigue. And you could read that at your leisure. Um, but please, please, please take this seriously because this is really true. This happens and it mostly happens with young adults who truly, you know, you think you really do have unlimited reserves. And, and you don't. You will hit you know, the wall at some point, so you want to be very careful. And the very last thing I want to read is the reflection <coughs> section that says, you have a lot of students in a campus community to think about and care for. However, 
it is important not to forget about taking care of yourself and what have you done to treat yourself lately. Okay? So if you get a chance, read through this thing. It's really important stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Colleen. <clears throat> we are in announcements. Presenter Crowley. Um, vagina monologues. Write it down now because you can't because you're all sitting at a computer or have a piece of paper. 18th, 19th, and 20th of February starts at 8 p.m. in the Mass Stone Chapel. It's going to be incredible. Um, likely all the proceeds are going to an organization that deals with youth counseling through um, the Domestic Violence Center. If not, it'll just go to a shelter. Um, we're just still figuring it out. 10% goes to the, um, the City of Hope and the Democratic Republic of Congo, which helps women who have been um, undergo, like have been sexually abused or have faced violence in the DRC. Um, on that note, as part of the V-Day campaign, we'll be selling um, chocolate vaginas, um, V-Day merchandise, and lots of different things in Nord all that week leading up. And Friday, the February 19th, there's going to be a teach-in about the Democratic Republic of Congo during community hour in Nord. It's going to be really exciting. You can learn all about what's going on there. It's co-sponsored with Stan, so get excited. If you have any questions or you want to be involved, let me know. Okay. Thank you. Is the show? Uh, 8, 8 p.m. Is the time the show starts. Colleen. And Heidi's in it, too. <laughs> let me get everyone. Colleen. Um, two announcements about Thursday, a very, very big day Thursday. Okay. Black History Month celebration. We have food and music. This time it's from Angie Soul Food Cafe, an amazing array of food, and a uh, jazz band called the Bill Jones Trio. They played at Night Town and a few places across, uh, across the city. So I'm very excited. It starts at 11.30. Please, please come get your robot. Okay, then later that day at 4.30 is the affirmative action open forum discussion. And being a member of Share the Vision for the entire time I've been here, this is probably one of my favorite things, is when Share the Vision responds in a timely way and offers an opportunity for students, faculty, and staff to get together and discuss um, something that might have hit the newspaper nationally, or in this case, it hit the newspaper on our campus two weeks ago. So please come. It's a, it's a very safe space for your opinion. Very safe. So if you have different <coughs> opinions, or if you just want to learn a little bit more about this affirmative action thing that you've heard about your whole life, you know, come in. Because the panel is set up to teach as well as to discuss. So that's at 4.30, and there will be some really bad, um, no, good, I won't, I won't say something bad, but um, some really good cookies. So I guess there's like these big chocolate chip cookies or something. Mm -hmm. Presenter Brubaker. Um, I think USG needs to all pitch in and um, buy singing valentines for Peter Douglas and Kristen Pinder so they can be serenaded all day by the Caseman Sleep Club on Friday. <laughs> buy them now. I think that's an excellent idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, Representative Matthews. Oh, um, I, I was just going to say, uh, just bought a uh, $80 ticket round trip to Southwest. They're having deals this week. Uh, for $39 each way, one way. Um, I, I go to Nashville, so if you need to buy a ticket, buy a suit. Compare them this Friday. Okay. Bye -bye. Wow. Representative <laughs> Bowler. There are two things. Uh, <laughs> the Academy Student Basketball game is February 26th. Um, if you're not invited on Facebook, you should probably be friends with me. Um, the, other thing, the other thing is uh, Relay for Life. Uh, it's basically my favorite thing in the world. And if you're not on the USG or SLJC team or whatever, you need to sign up for anything. I don't care. Especially if you've never done it before, it's awesome. Vice President Wang. Um, some things just came to my attention. I'd like to give everyone a follow-up on what's going on with uh, all the resolutions passed by the Academic Affairs Committee that brought to my attention. Okay. Uh, the first thing is the course evaluation resolution. That was discussed in FISBE this morning. Um, Apparently, the faculties are saying that those uh, course evaluations that we fill out at the end of every semester are only seen by the faculty. 
However, that is conflicting information with what Dean Wolkowitz and Don Peek is confirming because they're saying those are used to determine tenure or salary raises. So I, I mean, it's going to be discussed further and I'll follow up on it. The study abroad resolution that will be discussed in March, um, in the March this year meeting, um, now that David Fleshler has everything organized and ready to move on it. And I am still looking into the scholarship resolution as to where that is right now. Thank you, Vice President. Representative Bagat? Uh, two things. Uh, first one is uh, to write on what Representative Muller said. Um, there is an orientation leader team for Relay for Life, so if you've ever been an orientation leader, uh, you should sign up. So uh, there's plenty of people who have been orientation leaders here. Uh, second thing, um, what Representative Lupton said, I, re I appreciate each and every member of USG. Just so you know, you're all appreciated. Aww. Thank you. You can't talk about charity, down. Okay, Secretary Hunt. Kidding, it was a joke. Um, you should have all gotten an email from me about joining the uh, USG SLJC Really for Life team. Um, so please sign up. And also, I'm putting together a committee um, with a couple people from SLJC and a couple people from USG to um, help fundraise and actually um, be in charge of certain things during the event on the 16th and the 17th. So if you're interested in serving on that committee, please send me an email or come talk to me. Thank you. Vice President Wynn. Um, please raise your hands, those of you who have not gotten a picture taken from me today. <laughs> okay, so I see some of you over there. Um, I have a camera. Please see me after this meeting so that we can get your pictures for your uh, flyers. Yes, yes, you will take this. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, That's all. Any other announcements? President Pinder. Okay, uh, next Thursday, uh, he's having Boyce Watkins. Um, he's a world-renowned commentator. He's coming to Stroh Soccer Auditorium at 7 p.m. So please mark your calendar. It's a really great event. Um, SEC State University dress. Again, please attend. You have flyers at the front. You should pick one up. Pick a couple more up. Post them around uh, places where you live and eat. Uh, we really want a lot of student attendance at this event so we can kind of hold our student leaders accountable. Uh, Third thing and final thing, thank you guys so much for uh, your, your uh, attendance and your questions today with Vice President Mobley. They were really, really good questions. Well thought out. I can tell you guys really did research. Please bring that same spirit next week when we talk about being uh, fully optimal. Uh, a lot of undergrads have frustrations with financial aid, so this is the time to really kind of hash them out um, and kind of work together with her to uh, get some solutions figured out. Okay? Thank you guys. Representative Hammond. Get out. Sit, please. <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas is a